Hi, this is Philip at Chateau Avenson. And today, we're just gonna, I don't know, walk around and kind of discover what's going on in the chateau. Let's, let's go take a look. So I'm checking out what Ben's doing in this bathroom. Hello, Ben. Hello. And so there's been a, there's a problem with this wall here. And um, the, uh, it didn't really have this foundation. And we, we had this first layer of cement put in, but there's some issues with it. And so Ben's been working on that. So Ben, what are you doing over here? So you can probably see the initial layer of cement that was put in for the first time around. And the problem was that these wood oak posts were protruding down into the concrete. Concrete has a tendency to have this capillary action, so the moisture will come up, which has caused rotting. And you can see that in a couple of the beams down there, which has happened before. So <clears throat> we've cut them off, put fresh concrete, and created a metal separation between the wood and the concrete. These are bolted in. These are going into the concrete with these uh, all thread rods going in. And uh, when this is set permanently, we'll, uh, we'll bolt this all down to, to bring everything closer together. Excellent. So we've got a nice bit of air separation, which will hopefully help prevent any further moisture moisture issues. Coming up. And Same will happen over there, slightly so, different process. So on this side, this hasn't been done yet. The first layer of concrete was done. We had someone do this, but we really weren't quite satisfied with the work. And they've embedded the posts, you can see here, into the concrete when they poured it, which is not good because it, it brings the moisture up. And Ben mentioned just now the rotting posts, and you can see that here, they don't even touch the, the foundation basically, which is a little problematic. So you're about to do this over here as well, but there's a slightly different issue. Yeah, uh, so the, um, the other side of this was at one point initially this kind of old plaster uh, which over time, and because of the effects of moisture, once again, it's sort of seeped up and that's disintegrated. It's been redone with more modern materials, plasterboard, there's a piece there behind you, something like that. Plasterboard. Uh, again, because of the moisture, it's just crept up the walls into all this left. And as I put my hand on here... You can feel you can the wetness. really can. It's, it's really very humid feeling. So all this will need to come off. Um, I'll create some kind, again, a kind of moisture gap underneath uh, to air will circulate and help reduce the amount of moisture issues again. Right. So if we go around the other side, it's all dark in this room because I don't have a light in here. Let's see if we can get enough. Ah, you, know. you can see there's a chair rail. Uh, above it is the old lath and plaster and below it, the plaster that was there was removed and plasterboard was put on. Just this one section between this door and the door on the other side of the wall. So we just discovered that, and Ben's gonna take that plasterboard off so we can get that all cleaned up behind it and um, just try and air gap so the moisture doesn't kind of come up from the ground and the cement uh, into the walls themselves. It's one of the challenges of these old stone houses in France is like battling the moisture from the ground. So that's the plan. And when we're all done, this room will be a bathroom for the bedroom next door. I am walking down the treacherous staircase at the side of the property, and Hugh has been working on the linden trees, and I thought we'd check them out. And I have a little friend with me here too. Here's my friend, Ruby. She likes to come out, say hello, morale, morale. And here you can see uh, the linen trees that he was started working on. And then, Drew, let's go for a walk. And here you can see the complete linen trees. After they've been trimmed, and he's just gotten through a few of them. I am walking along the back of the house. You can see the fall, fall colors are out in the valley. Ooh, I hear a beauty. That's you. 
let's look over the wall here and see what Hugh's doing. Ew. Kind of sneaking up on him. So he has started an annual trimming of the linden trees. Hi. So you're working on the linden trees? I am, yes. Number one. Number one. Of? 30 to go, I think. 30 to go. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the linden trees that have not been trimmed yet. So this is the technique of pollarding these trees. There's about 30 trees on the mid terrace. They run in these two rows. And this mid terrace wraps about 180 degrees around the back of the chateau. So you can see these are the unpollarded trees. These trees were pollarded last year. So this is one year's growth. And now they're losing their leaves. You really start to see through it. But when they're fully leafed out, they're just big lollipops of leaves. You don't see the structure inside. And well, there's the rue. And there's the pilarda tree ready for next year. See, he was just working on uh, this one and we'll be coming back to it when he comes back. <laughs> uh, yes, all right. Someone needs a little attention. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you the pilarda trees, uh, the linden trees of Avonsec. So Stephen is working, patching this little part of the wall. Um, he had filled it in with mortar, uh, and I had said it was fine. <laughs> but then Mark saw a photo of it, and he wasn't so happy with it, so he's redoing it. Uh, and it's just this little patch here. There was a, a fairly large hole. This is where some of the pipes were coming out. Uh, for the kitchen and the apartment that was above the kitchen. You can see, of course, there's one pipe coming out there now. And uh, so we had to fill in this little section. Okay, we have Stephen arriving. He's mixing the, uh, just mixing up the mortar a little bit more. He's got his rocks. But what he doesn't know is about what I'm going to ask him. <laughs> Let's just see what's going on. So, Stephen, qu'est-ce que tu fais maintenant? Je vais refaire le mur refaire. avec des, les pierres apparentes. Ah oui. Voilà. OK. Mais c'est un peu trop liquide, donc je vais aller l'épaissir un peu plus. Ah, so, OK. Voilà. Ça, c'est bien. <laughs> Mais avant ça, je, je vais noter quelque chose, des choses. Oui. Le gris, là, est-ce que tu peux, yeah. oui, enlever là Ouais. Et euh, probablement, ça, ça c'est l'ancienne euh, évacuation pour le haut. Ok, oui. So, oui. Ça peut aussi remplir aussi. Pour boucher. Oui. D'accord, ok. Et aussi, <rire> je viens de parler avec Marc, euh, juste okay. un peu ici. Ok. Et après, après ça, juste faire le, si vous avez le temps, mm -hmm. euh, euh, faire le joint. Oui, oui, comme là, et aussi, aussi, ici, aussi. Ok. Merci. All right, so his mix is a bit too liquidy, so he's going to thicken it up a little bit. Um, and then he'll start uh, filling this in, and he's just going to, like, apply some of the mortar, put in some stone and apply with some mortar. C'est bon. <laughs> C'est bon. So he's uh, thickened up the mortar a little bit. And that will just help I'll support the stones a little better. Let's see. Put some in. So you can see he has a water can here. He was using that just to moisten or to wet the, uh, the space where he's working. Because you don't want the stones just to absorb or the, all the moisture out of the mortar right away. So uh, he fills it, he wets it down before working on it. And you can see he's just applying some of the mortar. Ah, did you 
used to catch that. He has the motor on the uh, trowel and he flicks it into place. And this is the method you do for joining. You kind of scoop up your motor on your trowel and you flick it in. And it just takes a certain skill to get that aim correct. And it's correct so it splats into the, the area that you're working correctly. And if you don't do it correctly, it just ends up going all over the place. <laughs> and here he is just sort of fitting some of the stones. In, into where he's mortared and he's looking unhappy about it. For some reason. He's choosing some others. And there he is, filling it behind the stone he placed. And so he'll just go through this process to fill this kind of indentation we now have in this wall. So I'll note in this area where Stephen's working, there's other repairs have been done on this wall. And not just recent repairs, but you can see like that line of brick that's running across just under the window. That's much older. Um, older work that was done that maybe is, was done uh, in the mid to late 1800s when they did a bigger model. It might have been done even sooner when they built, uh, earlier when they built the house. It's unclear. I, we think that part of this uh, wall and part of this uh, structure might have been from the older chateau. It's a little unclear. You can see here, there's a wooden lintel, and what obviously was maybe some kind of door at one point in this space. And when you look at this on the other side, you, it, it just it's clearly that this was filled in, that there was some kind of uh, doorway here. Um, and you can see like the dress stones on the right side framing in that doorway. So that's something that was changed but it might that it might have been changed when they actually built the house. So it must might have been part of an older structure from the ancient chateau that was incorporated into the new house. If we look up a little bit, you'll see in this top part, right, on the corner, you see very dressed stones on the corner, which is very typical. But what's interesting, if we look across, we see the same thing. Right here. So right to the right of this drain pipe, you can see there's a series of dress stones. And then they come down to just about where the same level as the window, and then it stops. And you can just see that it's more like the uh, rubbly stones below that. This is a suggestion, I think I've mentioned this before, that this part of the house was actually to the right was actually only one story, so there was only one level, and that the upper part was added later. And if that's the case, then the original structure of the house was just a large rectangle, and the upper portion of the wings were added later. And we actually see that same thing happening on the other wing of the house, where we have a line of dress stones just in the upper part, and, um, and, the, and the same exact thing. So eventually we're gonna go to the archives, for this department and just see if we can find more information about the chateau and the house and maybe if we can even find some original designs or drawings or something to kind of show us maybe a little bit of the history of how this has changed. But it's even clear that this house, originally built in 1820, has undergone some significant changes in really relatively a short time, in just 200 years, there have been some pretty significant changes. Since I'm on this side of the chateau, I just realized that last weekend, Hugh cleared out the space in the ruined house. So if I step back, you can see we have a stone wall. And we refer to this as the ruined house. I don't think this was ever a house. I don't think anyone ever lived in here. Um, one of my neighbors said he does remember it having a roof at one time. Clearly the roof is gone and its structure is gone. But you can see those holes in the side of the shea, and that's what we're looking at. This is the side of the, the, side of the wine barn, which is referred to as a shea, um, is where the beams were crossing. They would sit in those holes and they would cross over to the top of this wall, and that's what would hold up the roof structure. He says he remembered the roof structure being here many years ago. Um, obviously, this, this roof 
uh, deteriorated. And that's what happens. Once the roof deteriorates and water is coming through and you have infiltration, the beams get wet and then they uh, rot and then the whole thing comes down. And so at some point, that's what obviously happened here. And this was just full of spindly trees. It was pretty dense. And so uh, last weekend, Hugh cleared it out and really has opened it up. Right along the wall here, uh, it really looks like that over the years that um, they were dumping like grass clippings and debris of that nature, or maybe, I don't know, because you kind of got this big soil build up against the retaining wall. So maybe at some point we can dig that out a little bit and, you know, do something in this space. I'm not sure what. I always picture it as sort of a romantic dining area or something like that. And in fact, let's go check it out from below. So there's this really great ancient and rather treacherous staircase um, right here on this side of the house. And it's more dramatic when you see it from the bottom. I don't know why, I really love this staircase. It's just so, uh, I don't know, it's very old feeling. I love that it, it, it just kind of curves around just a little bit. Um, you can fall off of it. And it's quite perilous. <laughs> but uh, there's just something really beautiful and romantic about it. <laughs> uh, and then here I am in the ruined house. This is just now the, the wall of the ruined house. You can see in that doorway where the green door is, we're putting up, we put up a post recently um, just because some of those keystones are slipping over the top of it. It's interesting that these, use, these are using keystones. Um, in some parts of the house, they use keystones like this. In other parts, they use lentils. Uh, and by keystones, I mean these stones that are over the doorway. You can see they're slightly wedge-shaped, and that's what keeps them holding. Basically, the weight of the wall and the tension in the wall just keeps them in place. Clearly, this one is slipping as well. But there really isn't a huge risk that it's going to fall out. You can see it's quite wedged in there, so it's dropped a little bit. But um, it really can't fall out unless the wall falls to the right, so it's, it's pretty secure. Um, and you can see here, in that doorway, there's just a lentil, a wooden lentil, which is now, because it's exposed, is rotting away. And actually, we're going to uh, put in, this is another area, I'm going to walk through this very carefully. We're going to put in a post here, just right up here, just to support that upper section, as that lentil is now starting to uh, rot away. And eventually, at this point, we're just stabilizing this. And eventually, you know, we'll figure out what to do with this, this space. It's a, it's a little bit of an enigma. Nurse Judy from Chateau Avensac. We've had a lot of people asking about our in-house patient, and well, I thought we'd check in on the man behind the curtain. His name is, uh, um, I always forget this, uh, um, oh yes, Mark, Mark, uh, Mark, how are you? Oh, hi Judy, uh, hi everybody. Uh, actually, Judy, I'm glad you're here. I'm working on something really fun, and I want you to see it. Well, actually, that's interesting, but we've had a lot of people asking about your health. How are you? Well, Judy, you know I don't really like to talk about it, but um, for those that don't know, uh, a year and a half ago, I had to have a surgery to remove a tumor from my spine. Oh. And it left me paralyzed from the waist down. Fortunately, that is a temporary thing, but it takes a very long time. And as they say in France, petit, de petit, de petit, de petit, little by little by little by little. And I have come a long way. My left leg, which has been the problem, is finally moving. Uh, I can raise my foot. I can lift my knee. I can raise my entire leg. You can lift your leg to a point, not completely, but it's getting there. Uh, I stand, 
Um, Standing. Well, that's really good. Mm. Not mm. unassisted, but I can stand and my left knee is beginning to engage. I cannot walk yet. Let's, it's mm. very important to, to make that clear. But we're getting there. And who knows? Hopefully, maybe in the spring. Oh! oh. But, now, that aside, come over here. I want to show you something. Uh, well, what is it you're working on? I am working on a limited edition special t-shirt just for the holidays, Judy. And you are the inspiration. Oh, what? Here, let me show you. Ooh, what colors does it come in? Well, Judy, pink, of course, but it comes in a lot of different colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll only be available until the end of the year. So be sure to go to Shop Chateau Treasures at atthechateau.com. Well, Mark, it's great to hear that you're doing better, and perhaps in the spring you'll be up on your feet and working on the chateau, and oh, I love the Judy t-shirt. Everyone be sure to get one for everyone on your Christmas list. I'm Nurse Judy from Chateau Avensac. That's Mark from Chateau Avensac, and let's give him a boost to help him feel better. You have a great day. Goodbye, everybody. After I had taken that video of the ruined house, I talked to Ben and he came down and he put this post in place just to help support uh, the lentil here with that partial stone wall above it so that uh, hopefully this will you know, just kind of keep things in place until we really get around doing something uh, with this structure. So the wainscoting in the salon is being replaced along the outside wall. We had a lot of moisture problems. And unfortunately, we tried to save as much as possible, but uh, need only so much could be saved. So you can see that certain details in gray are the old wood, and obviously there's a lot of fresh wood. And for reference, you can see along this wall, this is the original Wainscoting, not original to when the house was built. This was put in a little bit later, during a later renovation. And as we look across here, you can see some of the wood has been preserved, whatever we could keep, and other parts that were just in much more deteriorated shape uh, having to be rebuilt. And as we come to the end of this, we have Paul here who did all the work. <laughs> he took the all original pieces to his shop and uh, used what he could, rebuilt them, and is putting them in today uh, and installing them. And yeah. How, so how long, how long was this process for you to rebuild uh, these? Well, it's, it's taken me about six days to redo all the bits, um, save what I could as and when I could. Um, the little molding is quite nice to save the little moldings. Yeah. Uh, but what's, what takes the time is recreating these mouldings because they're old and you can't buy them anymore. So I get metal blanks and then actually... So you cut, actually, you cut the blade? Cut the blade on a, on a grinder on a bench and just get it exactly the same. And then re these mouldings are millimetre perfect as a as the original of, of what's existing. Wow. Yeah. Great. And I, I hope you save the blade, so <laughs> when there's more to do... <laughs> yeah, I've, got, I've saved all the blades. Uh, sometimes they get reused and they, they might be close to another type of... Right, model, right. So I'll give a little tickle on the grinder right. and just change them. But no, these will probably stay. Uh, yeah. That's uh, it's quite an art form to whittle the metal that way to well, get it into shape. Yeah. Well, I've been doing it for... I left school in 1982, I started started school, so I've been doing this for 42 years now. So, uh, <laughs> so you know what you're doing. Is white now. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I know what I'm doing. But I still, you still learn. You still yeah. learn every day. So. But uh, I know, and I absolutely love doing things like this. It's fantastic. Oh. Yeah, oh. It's really nice to get the opportunity to do, you know, to work on something like this. And, right. Uh, you know, makes it a pleasure rather than a chore. Well, I, I'm very happy to say that you know, we have more pleasure for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Paul, Paul was looking at the uh, woodwork in the dining room, which uh, we're not quite ready to get to yet, but obviously that will uh, that needs a lot of work as well, similar to what was done here. And um, so there's there's more to come. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we can just see that he's fitting them uh, one by one onto the wall and just getting them set up in a way so that hopefully they'll be lasting here for another 100 or 200 plus well, so. years, maybe longer. So we'll get these ones fitted and then we'll put all the trims on and uh, hopefully this will be done today. Excellent. Paul finished installing the woodwork yesterday and now it's all in place and ready to be painted. You will notice that the baseboard or hmm, I think the British call it the skirting board is missing. That will come in just a little bit later. Uh, we're just going to clean up and get sort of the floor ready for that. But it's all been put in. And as I mentioned before, he reused whatever he could reuse, in particular some of these little molding pieces. He saved them and reused them. And you can see here on this panel that uh, he sanded it down, but that actually is, uh, the framing is actually the old framing. So he said he tried to reuse everything he could. There were just some parts where the wood was just really in very delicate condition. <laughs> so there wasn't much he could do. And when we plaster the walls, the Paul plaster will come down and meet uh, the trim piece that's sitting on top. So this, is, uh, this has been really great. Paul is just a master wood worker, a master carpenter. He's been doing this for years, so he's just he knows how to do it. He has the right equipment and tools. He's very meticulous. Uh, so it's really produced a very pleasing result. And when it gets painted out, it will look exactly like uh, the original woodwork that was here. Yeah. Okay, so juste la terre de sur le mur. Pas de chaud, pas de sable. Uh, après, dans la préparation, on y rajoute du sable quand même. Okay. Mais pas de chaud. Pas de chaud. Parce qu'il y en a déjà à l'intérieur. Excellent. So this is uh, clay and sand that was removed from the wall in the bedroom that they're working in. And they're just reconstituting it. So they just break it up and reconstitute it with some water. And then afterwards, they add a little bit of sand. And then they're using that to put it back on the wall. So we're using the exact same material that was put on the wall originally when the house was closed. Because they're working on the upper floor, they can't bring the uh, wheelbarrow upstairs easily, so they leave it out here and collect uh, the mixture into buckets, and then they bring it upstairs. So I let them carry it upstairs, and I just follow and watch. It really isn't that hard when you're not doing the work. So we are in Chamba Wheat, the Ramsey Suite. And in this room, we've moved two, hold on. We've moved two doors. Get a view of that. So on either side of the vestibule to this room, there was a door on either side into these dressing rooms. And we've moved the doors into the vestibule. And we're filling in the spaces where the doors used to be. So you can see here, they filled one in. Uh, and this is a base coat, and then there'll be another finishing coat uh, on top of that to smooth it out. This is just a rough base coat. But they're using the exact same mixture that was on the wall, crumbling it all up, reconstituting it, and then putting it back. I find it amazing that you can take the old material and just reconstitute it 
<laughs> and just use it again. It's kind of amazing. So this is just the old material and a little sand. Yes. And the old and the material is is uh, clay. Okay. Is there lime also in it? No. In the, in, okay, so it's just clay and sand. Clay and sand and fiber. And fiber. Mm, excellent. Ancient ones. And do you use the same mixture for the second coat? Uh, yes, but thinner. Uh, well, okay. I think it's nice that Stephen has somebody he can just talk to very freely. <laughs> Because usually he's here with just us and Ben um, teaching us French. <laughs> so this is uh, the project going on in the Ramsey suite. Um, we actually have the same situation going on in some of the other suites. So Alexander had come here, uh, and you can see that in this one. This is the room next door. Uh, you can see there are two doorways, the one we're looking through here and then into the room. Sorry, this is a little dark in here. Um, and so, like the other room, uh, this doorway here into the room is going to be filled in so that the door is just off the vestibule. The idea behind doing this is it gives us a little more flexibility in, uh, in how we arrange these rooms we don't have these two sets of doors on these walls. So it makes it a little bit easier for furniture placement and things like that. And it also puts the doors to the bathroom, not directly in the bedroom, but just off that little vestibule. So it, it just creates a little bit more separation for the bathrooms um, from the bedrooms, which is also a nice feature of uh, changing this around. So when they finish that room, eventually they'll be coming to this room and they'll be applying the same techniques. Alexandra had come today just specifically to work with them and to show them how to do this, how to reconstitute the old uh, clay mixture and how to apply it to the walls. And so she's kind of doing this as a master class for them and then they'll be able to continue this uh, on their own. So, let us say au revoir to the Ramsey suite. I hope you enjoyed our little tour of the current works going on at the Chateau. And a special thank you to our patrons whose contributions go directly towards the refurbishment and renovations of the Chateau. It's really appreciated. And to all of our viewers, thank you for supporting us by watching these videos and leaving comments. Thank you so much. This is Philip at Chateau Aventside. Stephen's actually doing, I would note that someone's very, very busy in the chateau. We'll just let it be. Well, Mark, it's great to hear that you're doing better. And perhaps in the spring, you'll be up on your feet and working on the chateau. Oh, by the way, I love the Judy t-shirt thing. Uh, uh, little Paul in there. <laughs>